Hello Chris Coders, how you doing? Today we're gonna be building a Python script that will automate the process of creating a new project, a new GitHub repository for us. My goal today is to create a new GitHub repo, leveraging the GitHub API and to set up my working development environment on my machine. So basically setting up the repo both remotely and locally. Let me first show you what a project creation process usually looks like and then we'll see where we'll go from there. Okay, so every time I want to start working on a new project, this is what I do. First, I navigate to my GitHub account and authenticate myself. Then I hit this button and create a new repo. Give it a name and decide whether I want to make it public or private. Once created, there's two ways of proceeding. Either I create some files in here and then I clone the repo, or what I usually do is copy these commands right here, where it says git remote at origin and then the repo URL. Then I switch back to my terminal, I cd into repositories, create a new folder with the repo name, and type git init to initiate a git repository locally. Then I paste in the previous command to link the local and the remote repositories. And lastly, we are ready to create some files and then do the usual git add file, git commit message, and then finally git push to master branch. With these previous steps, I can say that the project is now created and we're ready to start coding. As you can see, it requires quite a few manual steps to get it done. So what I would like to achieve today is to automate this process as I do it at least a couple of times a day. So our goal today is to create a Python automation script that would let me create a GitHub repository by simply typing something like create repo.py and then the repo name. The only prerequisites for today's video are Python, of course, Git installed on your machine and a GitHub account to store a repo and keep it version controlled. Good. Let's start by checking the GitHub API documentation. For instance, let's check on guides, then getting started. Okay, so here we have some basics on how to use their APIs and authenticate ourselves. They provide this example using call command where we can query this URL, the user's endpoint, by passing our GitHub username. Okay, let me try this. Let me copy this command and paste it in on my terminal. Let me change my username. Okay, it asks for my password. Nice, we get some response back. However, they are suggesting not to use username and password as authentication method, as it will be deprecated later this year. Instead, authentication needs to be done via HTTP basic authentication using an auth access token. So to create this token, simply go to your GitHub account, on account settings, then click on developer settings, and then on get personal access tokens. Click on create, give it a name, and then define the scope of this token, the permissions you want to grant it. Once created, make sure to copy this token value. Okay, let's test again the same command, now using the access token instead. So username, colon, and token. Great, same result. Okay, let's now check which API we should be using in order to create our repo. Okay, what we need is this one right here, create a repository for the authenticated user. The only required parameter is the repo name, of course, and we can also pass it some useful flags, for instance, whether we want to make this repo private or public, or whether we want to start it with a readme file. They also have this nice example of using call. Okay. Now that we have the API access sorted and we know what to query, let's start writing some code. Let's go back to PyCharm in our create repo project. To interact with the API, we'll be using requests and I'll also use pretty print to display some JSON information nicely. You can easily install them using pip. Check the link video above where we cover how to install Python libraries. So we'll declare a variable called API URL, which is the base API URL, of course. Then we'll use requests to perform a post operation on that URL, 
plus user repos, which is gonna be the endpoint. We have to pass it as well some JSON data. I'm gonna call it payload, and basically it contains name as key, and then the repo name as the value. Finally, we can parse the response using JSON, so let me print the output. And let's execute the script. Okay, we're getting 401 client error code, and well, this is expected. Basically, it is telling us we don't have the right permissions to do these operations. We are lacking authorization. We can solve this by passing some headers to the post request. Let's define headers as a dictionary, and we'll use authorization token, and then our GitHub token. We'll use these headers to set as well the recommended accept header. Finally, in our post request, we'll use headers equals headers. Okay, as a security good practice, do not store personal credentials on your code, and of course, do not publicly expose them on GitHub or anywhere else. Just for this demo, I'm going to save them onto another file that I will not be uploading to GitHub. Another option would be to store them as environment variables and get their value inside the script using the OS module. For now, let me create a new file called secrets.py and in here we'll define the variable github underscore token equals a random value. Then in our main script, we'll use from secrets import github token. Let me run this and a new repo has been created. The next thing we want to do is to have the ability to pass the repo name and the private flag via an inline argument. We can do that using argparse python library. So first we'll create a parser object, then we'll add the first argument which is going to be the repo name and we'll use the flag name or n for short. It's going to be a type string and it's gonna be a required argument. So the script won't work if we don't pass in that flag. Then we'll add another argument for the private flag. We're gonna use is private. And according to the docs, if we want it to be false by default, we should be using action equals store true. Finally, we'll get the arguments using parser.parse arguments. And let me print arguments and try to execute the code on the terminal. Okay, it is throwing an error saying that there are required arguments that are missing. In this case, the name of the repo. Okay, now let's try to pass in the repo name. We see that the private flag is set to false by default. Great. And now let's use the private flag as well. Awesome, now the flag is set to true. Finally, let's run it with a new argument. For instance, I don't know, timeout. And we are getting an unrecognized argument error. Awesome. To use these arguments within the script, we just need to assign the namespace attribute to a variable. Repo name equals args.name and is private equals args.is private. Okay, now we need to use these two variables in our post request. Let me update payload based on those two flags. So basically, if is private is true, then the payload will set the argument to true, and otherwise if is private is false, then we'll set it to false. Let's print payload to check if we are templating it correctly. So private is true, and with public, private is false. So before running the script, let me also capture this on a try block to handle exceptions. So if we catch a request.exceptions.request exception, we'll raise a system exit. And for that to work, we'll need to raise our request response status as well. Okay, let's test it out. Let's type Python create repo name repo public. Great. And now let's try repo private with a private flag. Okay, seems that the code has done something. 
Let's now switch to my GitHub account. Let me refresh the page. Nice. Here they are, both repos, one being public and the other one being private. Great, so at this point we have created the repo in our GitHub account. Now we just need to create the working environment locally in our machine. So basically inside our script we need to execute those shell commands we saw earlier. And we can run shell commands in Python using the OS Python module. So we're going to use the OS system function to execute the specific commands and the OS change directory to tell Python it should be executing those commands from a specific working directory. Let me do this quickly. So the script was in my labs folder. Let me change to my repo folder, NLS. And we can see repos from my previous videos. Since I want to create my repos here, I'm going to use repo path variable to save this path. First, we'll change to repo path. And once there, we'll create a folder called whatever we pass in as inline argument. And then we'll cd into that directory. And finally, we'll execute a bunch of bash commands. The first one, we'll execute git init to initiate the repo. We'll sync the local and remote repos with git remote at origin. We'll also create a readme file with the name of the repo on it. And finally, we'll add commit and push the changes to master branch. Let me show you again how my GitHub account looks like. Okay, as you can see, I have six repos and these are the four tests that we've done today. Now let's go back to PyCharm and execute the code from there. So I'll create a new repo and I'll call it GitHub Automation Project. And I'll make it private with a private flag. Okay, the execution is taking a bit longer than before, but it's just fine. Okay, the execution is now done. Firstly, let's check on GitHub. Let me refresh the page. Great, a new private repo has been created with the name we wanted and with the readme file with the repo name on it. Let's check now on my terminal. So we are not prompting the API response anymore and this is just the output of our git commands saying we have successfully created our repository. Let me change directories to my repositories directory and do an ls. And inside that folder there's a git state and the readme file. Awesome! The last thing I want to do, and that's just bonus points, is to have the ability to create repo at any time regardless of where am I in my machine. In other words, I want to make my Python script executable and runnable from anywhere. To accomplish that, we just need a few things. First, give execution permissions to my file. If I list all, we see that we only have read permissions only for groups and others. So I'll use the chmount command to give execution permissions to users, groups, and others. Okay, let me double check that. Okay, cool. Then we need to export my labs folder path, so the path where the main script is located right now, to my path environment variable. Let me copy this path. So I'll export path equals dollar $path, colon, and then the new path. And to make it executable from anywhere, we need to add this one line at the top of our script, user slash bin slash n python3, to tell the system to run it in a virtual environment. Once finished, I can now switch to another directory, then I can just run create, and then I hit tab for autocomplete. See, it detects the executable even though it's not present in my current folder. And now we can execute the script as we were doing before. So I can now type create repo without Python at the front, then name flag, and I'll call this one global app. And yeah, let's, let's keep it public. Okay, let's wait a few seconds. And the execution is now completed. Let's list my repositories directory. And here it is, a new folder called global app. And if I list global app, here is the readme file. Good. 
Let's check again on GitHub. Let me refresh the page. And the repo has been created. Nice. Okay guys, that's it for today. In this video, we've gone through a complete Python automation script that is gonna save me a lot of time from now on and hopefully to you as well. The script automatically creates a new GitHub repository, creates a local working environment for that repo and sync them so we can start coding in our machine right away. Hopefully this video has been educational for you guys. We've created the script from scratch once we knew what we wanted to achieve. We learn how to pass inline arguments to our scripts, how to interact with APIs using requests, and we've seen some good practice as well like using try blocks and parsing arguments. The script is by no means optimal, we could have made it much better, but for the purpose of this video, I think it's good enough. So guys, let me know what you think about this video. Do you like this type of applications? Do you want to see similar content? or would you prefer doing something else instead like data science or machine learning? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I will be uploading more Python applications in the near future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.